So do you ever wonder what it would be like if your company was more profitable, more productive, more efficient, and maybe there were less headaches and less drama? Or maybe you're just looking for a company where you can lead a team and you give yourself a little bit more freedom. Well, that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today because we're going to be talking about building a team of A players during this world today in this economy. So we're going to talk about the three big mistakes that we see companies making all the time. So if you are a regular listener to the Growth Think Tank, you might be wondering, who the heck are you, lady? Well, my name is Amanda Hammett. I'm the CEO of Core Elevation, and I am the business partner and wife of the regular host, Jean Hammett. So Jean and I are very, very lucky because we get to work together day in and day out, and we have some wonderful conversations about the companies that we work with, the leaders that we see, some of the mistakes that we see them making, but also their big, big wins. So we thought for today's very special 600th episode, we would have that conversation between us that we're normally having for all of you to see and to learn from. So hi, Gene. Welcome to your own show. I'm excited. I, this is a di very different experience to have your wife interview you. <laughs> yes, I guess so. You're on the other side of this. <laughs> yep. And, uh, you know, we wanted to put something special together for you as leaders. Uh, we want to make it in a fun, entertaining format. So this is our stab at it without, you know, this is social distancing at its best because we're, <laughs> we're already quarantined together. But that being said, I'm excited to to be here for this long. It's been over uh, five years. It's been just an amazing experience. We've got thousands of listeners. And so thank you so much for being here. And we plan to, to deliver this special episode for you today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what I think really makes Jean a little bit different in the marketplace, because Jean is actually an executive coach to leaders of all different industries, but he specially focuses in on that Inc. 5000. Um, so these are the fastest growing companies in the United States. They are at the top 1% of you know those companies, and they are putting in numbers like 1000% a year growth, 10,000%. I mean, it's crazy numbers that most companies really can't fathom. But Gene has actually gone in and done something a little bit different. He's done a lot of deep research with these companies, interviewing these founders, interviewing these CEOs, and really getting to the heart of it. And that that's actually something pretty special. And I think it's something that even if you aren't growing at that level, whether you're an Inc. 5000 size company or you're a huge, you know, Fortune 500 company, there's some lessons to be learned here, right? Absolutely. I mean, just toss it back at you for a second. You work with a lot of bigger companies that could, that could learn from the leadership styles that we talk about on the Inc. 5000. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I take what we discuss with your companies and the findings that you have, and I take it and I say, okay, how can we weave this in, you know, with these companies that are, you know, 75,000 employees or something like that? So, so that it's full billing here with my wife. Uh, I want to make sure you understand how amazing she is. And she doesn't know I'm actually prepared to do this. But um, I really admire her intelligence and her ability to um, listen and understand people. She works with a lot of the corporate around the generational issues going on inside of our cultures. And uh, it's not something that my uh, companies actually think about that much because they're already young. There, Many of them mm -hmm. are... Um, made up by 30 year olds. And, <laughs> and so they're hiring people that are younger than them in many cases. And so they don't have the same kind of, you know, five generations in the workplace. But Amanda truly is an expert around this. She's been doing this for many years. Um, for the last eight, she's given over 800 speeches. I forget the exact number. And um, she's she's worked with a lot of different groups in that journey. But now she's been working with the generational leaders and helping them understand their own leadership and the lack of leadership that is necessary in today's world. So that's the reason why she's not just someone I pulled out of bed to, to have a conversation with you today. She's actually an expert in her own right. Well, thank you. I, I thank you very much. Appreciate that. So let's, let's talk a little bit about these three big mistakes that you see. And well, first, before we get there, though, let's talk about the, the 10 fundamentals that you found in your research. And that's kind of the baseline for everything. I remember the first moment I did this, um, just go way back to about three or four years ago where I had one of my clients made the inklet 
and I was excited for him. Mm -hmm. We were celebrating, we were talking about it, and it got me thinking, what would uh, other companies be like? What are they doing differently than than what my company was doing? This was uh, Ron Dodd was one of my clients from the beginning. We worked together for about three years and his company was Visitor. Since then, they've made the company the list, I think, four times yeah. uh, consecutively, which is mm -hmm. impressive. Uh, but it, this time I was doing the research, I remember it was dis distinctly the week before a big speech when I kicked this off. It was I was launching my book, The Trap of Success, which I'm not here to sell you my book. But I remember it was thinking this is the wrong time to think about this. And I was able to use my my own team to, to find the, the CEOs of other founders. And I didn't record any of these interviews. Mm -hmm. But I remember there was 53 interviews in there. And I spent the entire week just really uncovering what was going on inside these companies that made them grow so fast. And the data was the foundation for the 10 fundamentals, which were the things that are present inside of fast growing companies that other companies just don't have that much of awareness around. So I, I would like to point out something as your business partner and your wife, we had a very big difference of opinion on you doing this thing. I thought that was, it was wrong timing for you to dive into this. I warned you, don't do this, don't do this, do it later, do it later. But you were like, no, I, I need to do this now. And I was admittedly frustrated with you. <laughs> and I was like, this, you need to focus on something else. This is drawing your focus away from other things. but you didn't listen to me. And I will openly tell you, publicly tell you, I was wrong. <laughs> and if you want to get that and have that replayed over and over again. Maybe I will. <laughs> um, how many people have their wife recorded? <laughs> I was wrong. Timestamp. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that. Probably it was the wrong timing, but what it gave me mm -hmm. was a new world. Mm -hmm. It really gave me this insight because I remember... Uh, I was giving a speech kind of on the regular stuff that I was talking about then, which is about growing companies and about how to how to really connect with your buyers through your your positioning in the marketplace. Um, and I was I was in Santa Barbara doing that speech. All that was wonderful. But what came out of it was just a, a real clarity around what was most important in business, which wasn't the marketing or sales. It was the leadership and culture. And I remember distinctly, there was a conversation I had with a, a guy that was on the, um, the the podcast before about me speaking at a big conference they had back when we spoke at conferences. Remember that? <laughs> In person. Yeah. Yep. Um, and he goes, what are you working on? And before I was even really new and what was going on, I said, here's the interesting research. And he said, oh, that's perfect. I want to put you on our uh, agenda. And I think this would be a good fit for the main stage. And I ended up speaking next to Brene Brown, which was one of my heroes at the time. Yeah, still. And yeah, it was an amazing kind of uh, validation that this message, this research was important to not just me, but to others. A hundred percent. But since then, you've taken those initial interviews and you've done over 500. Yeah, if you add it all together, it's been over 500. Um, I, I'd it, say that that's a really good indication because a lot of times you see these studies or you read these studies online it's like 86 percent, but it's like their pool of people is like three seven, seven people <laughs> you know um yeah and, and and it has been a commitment and it, it's mm -hmm. been hard because getting in contact with founders and ceos of fast growing companies is not easy they're they're busy they're running companies um they're off doing their own thing and if they're not they're um they're just hard to get in touch with anyway. There's there's layers of people to get to there. So I've had to take traditional appro or untraditional approaches to connect with these founders to uncover this research. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those fundamentals became the foundation. And it's been something that we've been using in different ways with clients. Mm -hmm. um, so we're here to talk about some of those mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't you introduce the number one, like, first mistake you always see? It It is something that's not apparent to many of the leaders, but when they feel the pressure that, you know, it could be different, it could be, we could be more productive, we could make more money, we could, whatever it is, you feel that, 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 that stress, that stress, yeah. um, there's a broken leadership model, but they don't realize that because they're doing what they've always done. And if you think about what 
the level of leadership that you have today has created the success you have, but it's also created the problems that you're living with. Mm-hmm. Now think about that for a second. The level of leadership that you have today has created your success, yay, but it's also created the problems that you're living with. A hundred percent. And the way that works out is what worked to get you to this point, say it's 10 million or say it's 20 million or 40 million, um, you have to start looking and changing the leadership model, how you, um, I'll use the one word that's from the fundamentals, how you empower others Mm -hmm. to take ownership of their work instead of you being involved with every meeting. Absolutely. But you know, I think that that's really interesting that you see that in the Inc. 5000. You see that in the Fortune 500. You see it everywhere across the board in and, every organization. And they don't realize it. And I, I'll, I'll granted, I didn't realize it either. I ran a fast growth company <laughs> yep. and I thought that my job was to remove the problems mm-hmm. from everyone else's problems. And so they were paid less than me, or actually sometimes I paid more than me, but <laughs> I was, I showed up every day as a firefighter and it it was very stressful to always be solving the problems. It took me stepping back, realizing and actually getting a coach of my own of saying, well, why is this? And she's like, you know, because you're trying to do everything and they're, they're just doing what you tell them to do, Mm -hmm. which is a, you know, one example of a broken leadership model. We could go into some other examples um, I know you've seen some of this stuff and some of the things I've talked oh, yeah. to you. When you think of broken leadership model, what do you get? I, honestly, I see this play out so in so many different types of companies and industries. Um, it always that bottleneck you see. You know, I don't understand why can't they just do what I say? But on, then on the other hand, they, you know, I'll, the same leader will say, I don't know why they can't figure it out themselves. And I'm like, really? You you don't know why they can't figure it out themselves? Um, you know, that's one thing that I see very consistently, especially when you have your early in career, uh, when you're a leader of early in career people, um, you, you see that a lot because they don't have a lot of business experience that they're bringing to the table. Uh, they have a lot of know-how and a lot of figure it out, but not a lot of actual, you know, hands-on experience. That's the big, big thing that I see. And the thing that I think that's the most frustrating is, is that piece. I think one thing to wrap this up is the broken leadership model is going on in your company. If you feel like we could be doing more, but you feel like you were still in the way. If you feel like the team is, you know, we, I know we have a smart team. I, you trust them. You, you've hired them, right? You Hopefully you have the right people. But if you still feel like you're the bottleneck, you definitely have a problem with this broken leadership model. You may not even recognize that you're the bottleneck, though. I see that a lot. Sometimes, but but let's let's assume that everyone here has <laughs> evolved enough to, to have self awareness that okay, yeah, maybe I am the problem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So what's what's the big mistake number two? Well, it really is about not developing the people the right way. Oh yes. The people want to be trained, right? They want skills. They want more. Um, experience. They want to have an increased value. And I, I think a lot of people um, get this wrong. You really do want your employees to feel like the time that they're working with you, that they're increasing their marketability to the world, yep. but yet they don't want to leave. That's a that's a hard one to yes, struggle with. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that a lot of people, this scares them. They don't want to invest because they're, they are afraid that they're going to lose them. And it's like, if you're afraid that you're going to lose them, that should tell you a lot right there about your leadership model, going back to number one. But number two, you know, not developing them. I think that we have a tendency to really deep dive into those hard skills. So your technical skills um, or, you know, very specific job specific skills. And we don't think about the leadership when in all reality, you know, People leave their jobs mostly because of that frontline leader, mostly because that frontline leader doesn't know what the heck they're doing, isn't empowering them, isn't helping them, you know, get to that next place. I think the numbers are 86%. That was pre-recession, pre, you know, COVID. I think that those numbers are going to be significantly higher as we pull out of this. And to add to that, the the thing that we see most, which you just said, was the Companies will invest in the hard skills, right? Mm -hmm. The certifications or the online trainings that will give them um, a new awareness on this this skill. 
but they're not thinking about the softer skills. The, you know, mm -hmm. how many times do we talk to clients? I think both of us do, and we realize that it's a communication problem. Oh gosh, daily. And it's not just about the words you choose. Maybe it's just about listening. Mm -hmm. So when you think about developing people the right way, you've got to learn to uh, really give them more experiences, empower them to move forward. Uh, I know that that's a word we use from, from the mm -hmm. previous mistake, but you know, are you truly empowering them? Are you giving them the confidence and the courage to make these decisions? Or maybe it's just to stand up in the room and say, I've got a different opinion here. Because if they don't have the confidence or the safety to do that, it's a real problem for the company to continue to move and navigate faster than it is right now. A hundred percent. And, you know, to add on a little bit more to that, what one big thing that I see is that companies will send someone to do some training or get a certification. And then that's it. That's it. They don't expect them to actually do anything with it. It's not implemented day in and day out. And in particular, you know, these communication skills, these softer skills, these people skills, you, you know, the ones that people think are a little, uh, you know, it, it's not quite, it's not going to give me an ROI immediately. That is false. That is false. If you are actually bringing these softer skills in, you are allowing your employees to really implement them, to do something with them on a day-to-day -day basis, you will see an ROI. Absolutely. All right. So I know we've got to begin to wrap this up. The 600 episode, um, there's a lot of stuff to unpack here. And so yeah. before we go into the third one, I'll just mention um, one of the training that I've been working on and, and you helped me with too mm -hmm. is really important for you to, to go get a deeper view of it. Put some context to some of the things we're talking about today. So if you want to go get that training, all you have to do is go to genehammock.com forward slash training and it will give you, ex you know, more details around these mistakes, a little bit more about how you can actually address them and give you some frameworks too to help you move forward. Yeah, it, it's actually a really meaty 30 minutes. That's a weird thing to say, yeah. but it is a really meaty. There's a lot in there. There's a lot of, you know, information. So yes, you're, you're definitely going to, instead of spending, you know, however many hours on Netflix one night, maybe you spend 30 minutes and really sit down and take some notes because it's, it's meaty for sure. All right. So we're going to bring it home with the, the third mistake. All right. Bring it home, man. The, the third mistake that we see so much is the team's not aligned. Um, we're going through a lot with this coronavirus that no one would anticipate. No one expected this to be where we are today. And there's some uncertainty around this. I'm not going to say the new norm uh, because it's probably overused right now, but there is some new realities to this and that uncertainty. Um, so that causes the team to not really be aligned as well as they could be. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were before, but I find a lot of companies are really seeing cracks in the foundation of their business and their culture because what they thought was alignment really isn't alignment. Yeah. I mean, it was just more physical presence and what you learn about somebody being in their physical presence. And now that that's been taken away, that we're all, you know, working from home, it's really exacerbated those issues. And so you want to make sure that you're, you understand the team alignment. The best way I know to do that, we mentioned the fundamentals in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll bring them up again. There's 10 fundamentals. I will throw them up on the screen right now so that you can kind of see what they are. And, and you can have them. You can actually develop your own conversations around these 10 um, ideas, if you will, the, these fundamentals of how you operate together. And if you had a conversation, it would really help your business mm -hmm. around these things. But what would hap help you even more would be to have a um, sort of survey around this stuff. We actually came up with a very special way to do that. Inside that training I mentioned, we, we go into it into detail, so I won't go too much today, but I know you were involved with a recent company that went through this. Um, what were your impressions of, of the fundamentals and what it told you from the inside around how the company was growing? You know, I, we've done this multiple times, and, and what has always been really interesting is that the company realizes, every company realizes, that they have some issues. But then they think all these other, you know, of the 10, oh, we're doing solid, we're good on that. And the leadership might even, you know, score themselves pretty high in these areas. But when you talk to the employees, it's a completely different story. And so when we're bringing this up as a third party, you know, this is what your people are saying. This was their impression. It's, 
it, it sometimes is a little bit of a knock in the chest or a little bit of a, a difficult thing to understand. But I think that, uh, you know, especially this last one that we saw last week, you know, the CEO is like, man, I didn't realize that. And that was always something that I, I think is really hard to take in the moment, but something that they actually, once they start acting on it, they realize it's beneficial to know. So if you think your team's aligned, the moral of the story is, well, are you sure? Um, <laughs> it's not just what you think was going on. It's what's going on in the front lines, what's going on at middle management, what's going on as they interact together. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't even realize some of the issues. So we had that training that I mentioned before that I'll just go ahead and say, if you can get more depth around this and try to understand um, what that is. It's genehammett.com forward slash training. And if you want to go to it, you will get the not only these mistakes, but how to actually move next. What's the next step for you? And it's not spend a bunch of money. It's not buy my product or buy my book, but you will understand just from watching that, going through that training, genehammett.com forward slash training. All right. How do you want to wrap this up, Amanda? Well, I mean, I think that we've given them the three big mistakes um, so that they can build their own team of A players. And hopefully that team will give them some freedom, some more productivity, efficiency, all the things that we want as business leaders. But I also hope it gives them some peace of mind because right now we just don't know what's going on. And that's, I think, scary for everybody. You know, if you haven't already kind of thought about your next step as a leader, this next, this training would be really helpful. But let me go back to a second here. You live with me through building my first company. Yes. And I I know that I, it was not easy. And, and there were times when you were like, are you sure you know what you're doing? Because I left the big corporate job. I was making about 150,000 a year. My first year was 30,000. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Yes, I do, Gene Hammett. We were, we were just engaged at that point, I think. Yeah. And um, I told you I could pull it out. I did. You did. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Give us a little bit of perspective of why you think I, you know, what changed inside of me from a leadership standpoint through all that. I can tell you this. Um, the relationship that you had to your job, to your company then, it was everything you did and thought about and breathed day in and day out. And it was hard on our relationship. It was hard on, you know, you know, we had a very young child at some point during this. And it was very difficult because that's all you thought about. And so it left me as your spouse, as your partner, really kind of scrambling to pick up the pieces and everything else. Um, but I also worked in the business, which meant when we would go out to dinner, he would bring a notebook so we could brainstorm ideas. And it was so frustrating for me because it just, it never shut off. But he eventually was able to learn through his own leadership style that it wasn't okay. He had to, in order to really be productive and to grow, he had to shut it off sometimes. And that was probably the best thing that ever happened. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, we've been through a lot, I've been through a lot. And so I share this with you because I understand. And I know what it's like to not know what your next step is. Maybe everything's going great but you're uncertain about how you're going to evolve as a leader. So that's what I do. I love doing this. Um, I actually spent four or five years in my business stuck at about 6 million. And it's very painful for me to look back at that and see that I didn't evolve. I wanted to create a bigger company and I couldn't. I couldn't let go of who I was and, and the leader I was at that time. And it impacted my marriage, my me being a husband, um, and, and father as well. And it just, I share this with you because I understand the the anxiety and stress that goes with being a leader. And the, the, you can't really make excuses for, for anything. Mm -hmm. You have to take it yourself. And, and that's hard. It, it can feel lonely. And so if you want to continue the conversation with me, I'd love to connect with you. Make sure you check out the training first. Let's have some time for a call. And that would be the first place I'd go. So one last time, go to genehammett.com forward slash training. And that will get you what you want. And uh, I'll wrap this up with my usual. If you think about leadership and you think about growth, make sure you think about Growth Think Tank. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time. Bye.